Auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim We continue reading the chapter 1 of Fazail al-Amal story uh, Fazail al-Amal and the first chapter is about the stories of the sahaba enduring hardships and difficulties for the sake of deen bismillahir rahmanir rahim nahmaduhu nahmaduhu wa nusalli ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم وآله وصحابه وتبعيه 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 الحمات الد وتبعيه الحمات للذين الكو 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 الكوي مي اما بعد الكوي مي اما بعد let alone actually enduring the hardships and difficulties that the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhu experienced for the sake of deen it is difficult for unworthy people like us to even make the intention to endure such difficulties the books of histories are replete with such incidents but far from emulating them we do not even endure the hardships of educating ourselves about them The few stories in this chapter provide just a glimpse. We will start with a story about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself, whose mention is sure to attract Allah subhanahu wa taala's blessings. So the first story is about Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's journey to Taif to extend invitation of Islam to the people who are living in the Taif. Taif is a town. Uh, a bustling city now in Saudi Arabia for 9 years after announcing his nabuwat mean prophethood rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued his work of propagation in makka and continuously make any um, make an effort to guide and reform his people however apart from the small group that became muslims and the few people who re- who assisted rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam despite not converting to islam the majority of the kuffar of makka kuffar mean non believers continued to cause harm to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions they still mocked at the muslims and left no stone unturned to do whatever they could to ha- to harass them rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uncle abu talib was one of the good people who uh, assisted rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in every possible manner despite not converting to islam when he passed away in the 10th year after the declaration of nabuwat the kuffar found the opportunity to intensify their efforts in harming the muslims and preventing people from accepting islam it was then that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam decided to proceed to taif thinking that if the large thaqif tribe accepted islam the muslims in makka would have a safe haven which could then become a base from which to propagate islam when he reached taif rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke to the three chiefs who were very highly regarded by the people rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam invited them to accept islam and to assist him however far from accepting the invitation they did not even display the proverbial arab hospitality rather they scoffed at him and behaved most insolently in fact they did not even allow him to stay over one of the persons whom rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke to thinking him to be a cultured and civil man sneered what did allah subhanahu wa taala send you as a messenger the other scoffed and said could allah subhanahu wa taala was not could allah subhanahu wa taala not find anyone else beside you to send as a messenger the third person said 
I do not want to speak to you because if you really are a messenger as you claim, then rejecting your message will bring trouble. However, if you are an imposter, then I would not want to speak to you. Rasulullah was a rock of steadfastness. So when he lost hope in the chiefs, he approached the common people. But none of them would accept what he said. Instead, they ordered him to leave their town and to proceed wherever else he wished. When Rasulullah lost hope in any of them responding, he started to leave the town. However, the people then set the youngsters of the town after him to tease him and to throw stones at him. They continued doing this until Rasulullah wasallam's shoes were clogged with a blood that flowed from his body. Once Rasulullah wasallam felt that he was safe from the mob, he made the following dua. And it's a long dua. Allahumma ilayka sh- Allahumma ilayka ashku zu faku wati wa killata hi lati wa huwa imi wa huwa imi alan nas ya arhamur rahimin anta rabbul mustad afin wa anta rabbi ila min tukal ila man tukil ila man takiluni ila baidiyat jahmuni um am ila adu wa am ila adu adu mal katwa mal katahu amri in lam yakun bik ala ghazabun fala ubali walakin afiyati ka hiya aw si li auzu bi nuri auzu bi nuri wajhta allazi ashraqta lahu ashraq ashraqat lahu lahu zulumat wa sulaha wa sulah wa saluha alayhi amru amru dunya wal akhira wal akhirati min in min ayyan zila bi ghadab ghadab dukta aw yahalla ala sakhtul lakal lakal utba hatta turda walahul wala quwwata illa billah wala hawl wala quwwata illa bik okay uh, is translation is all la subhanahu wa ta'ala only to you do i communicate my weaknesses my lack of ingenuity and lack of importance among people o oh, the most merciful of those who show mercy you are certainly the rub of the weak and you are my rub to whom shall you hand me over to an enemy who will treat me harshly or to a near one to whom you will you shall give control over me if you are not angry with me i care for nothing all i require is that your protection should be vast enough for me in the light of your continence by which mu by which multitudes of darknesses are turned to light and by which the affairs in this of the affairs of this world and the akhira akhira is life after death the akhira are rem- remedied i seek protection from being afflicted by your wrath and displeasure the cause of your displeasure should be removed until you are pleased there is no power and no might but with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that was the translation of the prayer the muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had at that time now seeing his condition allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the king of the kings sent hazrat jibril alaihi salam down to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam that is the angel gabriel he greeted rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam with the words of salam and said allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had heard you heard what you have told these people and the replies that they gave you Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to you the angel who is in charge of the mountains so that he may be at your command 
the angel then presented himself <coughs> before Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He also greeted Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the words of salam and said, "I am at your command. If you command, I shall cause the two mountains to collide and crush all that lies between them. You may also issue any other command to punish them." However, the merciful Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied by saying. I hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that if these people do not become Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should create amongst their progeny such people who will worship him. So we can see today, if you go there, alhamdulillah, the entire population living in that town is are following the deen of Islam. Note, so this was the mag, magna, uh, magnanimous soul whose name we take. We profess to be people who follow him. Yet, when someone causes us the slightest of harm, we explode and then continue to cause excessive harm to the person for the rest of our lives just for revenge. Despite the severity of the harassment that Rasulullah received from the people of Taif, Rasulullah neither avenged himself nor cursed them. So that was the story of Taif. We will use this time to read one more and then we will conclude. And it's a short story. And this is about the martyrdom of Hazrat Ans bin Nadhar. Hazrat Ans bin Nadra. Anhu was a Sahabi who did not have the opportunity to participate in the Battle of Badr. This grieved him much and he would always chastise himself for not participating in that epic battle of Islam. He therefore hoped that if another battle arose, he would give it all he had. Coincidentally, the Battle of Uhud <clears throat> the battle of Uhud took place not long afterwards that he fought with great courage and bravery. Whereas the Muslims were initially victorious in the battle, an error on the part of them, an error of, on the part of some, soon lost them the victory. So Rasulullah had appointed some of the Muslims to guard a pass in the mountains which the Kufar could exploit to launch an attack against the Muslims. Rasulullah had issued explicit instructions that they should not abandon the post without his command. When the Muslims were winning the battle and the Kuffar had started to flee the battlefield, those guarding the past pass left their position. They did this assuming that the battle was over because the Muslims were pursuing the kuffar and collecting the booty. The commander of the group tried to prevent them from leaving, reminding them of Rasulullah's instructions that they were not to leave without his instructions. They, however, understood that the instructions was only for the duration of the battle <clears throat> and therefore proceeded to the battlefield. When the retreating Kufar army saw the pass unguarded, they immediately launched an attack from the pass. So the Muslims caught unaware. The Muslims started to disperse in confusion as they were attacked from both sides. It was then <clears throat> that Hazrat Ans bin Nazra bin Nazar radiallahu uh, anhu saw Hazrat Saad bin Maud bin Maud bin Muad radiallahu anhu coming towards him where are you off to O Saad he cried out and he replied by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I smell the fragrance of Jannah paradise emanating from Mount Uhud. Saying this, he flung himself into the thick of the battle with sword in his hand. He was eventually martyred 
as he continued to forge ahead. When his body was seen afterwards, more than 80 arrow and sword wounds were counted. Only his sister managed to identify his body, and that too only by his fingers. So the note to conclude is people who carry out the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity and devotion get the taste of Jannah in this world already. Here was Hazrat Ans bin Nadar Anhu, who smelled the fragrance of Jannah in this world. Such will be the experience of people when sincerity enters their hearts. I have learned from a reliable person who was a diligent attendant of Hazrat Maulana Shah Abdul Rahman Rai Puri that Hazrat Maulana had also stated, I got the taste of Jannah. This incident has already been related in the virtues of Ramadan. And that's the end of this second story. There are a couple of things I need to correct because here the name uh, of Hadrat Ans bin Nadar uh, is in one place it is written as Nadra. So that's why I was not sure uh, what is correct. I think uh, it's only one place where I found the error Nadra, Nadar, Nadar. Then I don't see Nadra anywhere else. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Thank you very much.